What's up guys, Flo Shizzle here, and this is the ultimate, most in-depth, comprehensive guide for KO. Now I know you're gonna be doubting me, but just watch through the video, and if you see by the length, yeah, I'm not kidding around. KO has become more and more meta, especially as pros really realize that he counters everyone. His knife gets a lot of information, as well as be able to suppress and delay. His mollies do the same, and his flashes are nothing to scoff at, as pop flashes are super strong. Before I continue, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Swift Skill. Swift Skill is a website that helps players improve by giving visual aid and understanding where exactly your tendencies can be fixed as well as what type of habits you might have that might be good or bad. On top of the normal overview with showing stats based on the matches that you've played as well as the number of abilities casted, there is also an in-depth heat map that shows the kills and deaths by you on both the attack and defense. I can also notice where I am dying a lot, paying attention to the fact that a lot of these deaths on C are pushed up, so maybe I'm getting a little bit too over aggressive. Since Valorant doesn't quite yet have a replay viewer, Swift Skill comes in handy. There's a 2D match analysis where you can see very clearly what happens throughout a round, who kills who, at what time. All in all, Swift Skill is just a really good tool for really identifying your strengths and weaknesses and accelerating your growth to Radiant. Now with that thanks being said, let's continue on to the video. So let's start with giving a quick rundown of the abilities. I'm not going to try to go too far into this because I'm assuming you guys already know a little bit about it, but let's go over it. Starting with number one, it's his Fragment Grenade. People also refer to as a Molly since it does act over a period of time and it's it's not just like a one-time explosion. When you throw it, it creates a sphere actually where it pulses and each time it pulses, it has the ability to do damage. The closer you are to the center, the more damage it does. The fragment will instantly stick to any flat surface on the ground. So it can bounce off of the walls, but once it lands, it'll just stick. So don't really think of it as much as like a Brim Molly where it will bounce. Think of it more as like a Viper Molly. Some things that you want to pay attention to is that this Molly now with the recent update can go through the wall. So if I throw it here and I decide to stand toward this area, you'll realize that I am getting hurt. This makes it really great for breaking things through the wall. So one example is Killjoys will like to place their ult right here. But if you just throw your Molly right there, it will go through and break the ult. Now back on the A side, we're going to talk about the flashes and they are called the flash drive, which is actually, in my opinion, kind of funny. You have two types of throws. You have a left click throw and you have a right click throw. The left click is an overhand where you can toss it much farther. The right click is an underhand which is really good for pop flashing or setting up for flashes that are near and dodgeable. Left click will generally be used a lot more to support others or used for delay. Right click will be used a lot more for yourself or sometimes if you are in a smoke and you're stacked up with your team, you'll right click pop flash out of a smoke and then swing out. Moving on, let's talk about his signature ability, and that is his zero point, otherwise referred to as his knife. And it acts on a cooldown timer where once you use it, it'll immediately start a timer where eventually you'll be able to get it back again. You can use it throughout the round. KO knife goes through walls, so throwing it against something like this will still affect people in the radius that are on the other side of walls. On top of that, it does tell you that people are suppressed who is suppressed and how many. So it's naturally seen as a really good information tool. So throwing it somewhere like early A main, if you look in the mini map, will a lot of the times catch attackers off guard as they are not gonna be expecting it. They'll be suppressed so they can't use abilities and you'll have the information on the type of agents that are there as well as how many. Lastly, we're going over his ult, the null command. Pressing the alt key will activate this state where KO will continually emit pulses similar to the KO knife or zero point it'll suppress anyone within this radius. The next thing is that if you get killed while in this ulted state before the final pulse, then instead of dying, you actually go into a down state where you have like a significant amount of HP, something like 800. You can still stay alive. You can still see what the field of view that you had before you died and your teammates are allowed to res you within a certain time frame. KO ult is really good on delaying attacks as if attackers are pushing toward the A site and you were to pop your ult, all of them would be suppressed, making them unable to use abilities, which would highly deter them from coming out, especially since things like smokes aren't gonna be here, there'll be no flashes, they would literally just have to run in dry. It's also good on the attack because it stops defenders from re-smoking out chokes or using utility to bottle you out, such as mollies or nades, and therefore you have a pretty free sight exam. Now with the basic abilities out of the way, let's actually talk about something with substance. Like, what maps are KO good on? Well, at a higher mortal and radiant level, and especially toward the pro scenes, you'll see KO mostly run on maps like Ascent, Breeze, and Haven almost all the time. Now, it's not that he's bad on the other maps such as Pearl, Fracture, Icebox, or Bind. It's just that a lot of the times you'll find that other agents gain more value and KO's knife doesn't gain as much. And that's generally a pretty big tipping point. 
if you guys want specific guides on those specific maps please comment down below and let me know so there's a significant reason why ko is strong on those specific maps so we're going to be talking about ascent here it's a lot of thin walls that allow you to get a lot of value with your knife shutting out a lot of information He's a perfect tree player on Ascent as he flashes through any sort of aggression through Cat. So if they were to smoke out tree, you can pop flash easy enough. If they are to hit through A main and they smoke out door, after breaking the door, you are welcome to flash out as well, being able to support any of your teammates. As well as being able to get early information just by throwing a knife somewhere like here. You can even just wait till you hear an ult or being grabbed. But the fact that you get this much information and the walls are so thin, really provides this value. All the fights you take are gonna be relatively close, so your flash is always going to be effective. KO is also really similar to Ascent in the fact that knives like this will clear a lot on the retake, as well as be able to clear sewers. Super aggro knives like this shut out all A main aggression by just throwing it against the wall, like right here, and you'll notice that it covers all of A lobby. Haven is also a map with three sites, so on the defending side, it makes sense that you're playing retake a lot, because you have to spread out more thinly. KO's ult is really good for retakes. It just sets up really, really well. As for Breeze, it's less about the thin walls, and it's more about the fact that you're playing against a Viper. Viper's utility is super strong on Breeze, because of the fact that she needs her wall or a team needs a wall to get out onto pretty much any of the sites the common one for a is something like a diagonal here the common one for b is one that scales along the half wall if viper needs to stay unsuppressed to be able to keep her wall up well that's a problem because if you think about it when on an a rush let's say which is a very common strat on breeze if the wall goes up the viper wall goes up and people are flooding out ko throws a knife against that wall and you see how it's suppressed all the way into shop well then, the wall goes down, all your teammates who are sitting stairs, yellow door, and back sight now have a free firing squad range on all the people who are running out. In general, you'll find that KO is very strong against Viper just because of that fact, as KO doesn't counter other smokers quite as hard because usually when they drop the smoke, they don't have to worry about it anymore. Once it's down, it's down. Unlike Viper, if for example, you were going against a KO that is ulted, well, the Viper would have to make sure they stay out of the range the entire time that ult is up to ensure that the wall stays up and all her smokes stay up. All right, now hopping back to Ascent, and I'm using this map because I think it's one of the most default maps. There's an A, there's a B, and there's a mid with a way to split A and a way to split mid and a way to split B. So let's talk about running some defaults as KO. I'm normally going to say that it is generally worth it to use your knife early you can adapt it as you kind of decide what the enemy team is doing but using it on pistol round early isn't a bad idea especially since you have no idea how the enemy is going to play and if you just instantly shut down a rush or determine that nobody is there that is huge info so on a set something common would be just throwing against this wall Sometimes I will purposely, if I want to stay to defend tree instead or defend cat, I will stay toward this area instead of playing toward a main because that kind of puts me a little bit out of position. And I'll wait and if I hear anything, I will throw it against this wall. And it kind of does the same thing. But the reason I do this is sometimes I can bait for a little bit longer, especially at Radiant and a high immortal elo. People are waiting for KO knives pretty commonly. Once they see that you have one, they'll sit back for the first like five seconds or so. Make sure that KO knife is not going to come out and then they'll start pushing. If you stall it for a second a lot of the times it'll work well and they'll end up pushing because they think it's safe and then you catch them all off guard and now you know how many exactly how many players are toward that site and they all can't do anything they just have to wait for their abilities to come off the cooldown the times where you want to hold on to your knife is when they the enemy team is playing extremely slow so if they're playing extremely slow the reason why you want to hold on to it is that it doesn't help as much you might spot one you might spot two but in the end they might not do anything Maybe they're always playing a default and therefore you spot to a main that doesn't tell you anything because they're still working mid, they're still working B. And therefore saving this knife for a more opportune time can be a lot more appealing. The other time you want to save knife is when you see key ultimates and I can't stress this enough. Times where there are key ultimates are especially like Raze, where when she pops Showstopper, well, she doesn't have her ult anymore. It actually gets completely canceled. Therefore, she has an eight ult point ult that is gone and that's insane uh they usually that takes quite a long time to build up and if you can cancel it out that's just huge value for a free ability next is something like chamber chamber op is very crucial a lot of times when you're in like a one-on-one -on -one situation with chamber you'll find that the chamber might have an op and you don't really want to peek it if you catch them off guard and they don't expect you to throw the knife at them you can literally kill them for free because they'll be in the animation of putting away the operator and needing to pull out their gun and a lot of the times chamber doesn't even have a gun behind it they'll just 
literally have just the classic because they just popped up and maybe dropped for their teammate. It's a really common thing to do. So a lot of times, if you think ahead, you can set yourself up for these plays that just get you free kills. The next thing is pistol round. Headhunter is super common for chambers just buy sheriff shots instead of buying an upgraded pistol like a ghost. So with that being said, on pistol round, if you save your knife so that you actually target this chamber or something like that, you can shut them out of having a headhunter and you might get a free kill as like I said in the animation where they're now pulling up the classic because their gun has disappeared. Now onto the topic of defaulting a knife toward the early round, you also don't want to always do it toward the same place. While it is good to use it toward the site you're defending, you want to be adaptable and flexible as KO is a very strong flex agent. Instead of always throwing toward A main, sometimes tossing one toward tiles is really good. Making sure that there's someone there or nobody's there and both tell you the story. Basically, if no one's tiles, you don't need to worry as much about some sort of mid hit because it doesn't really make sense if you want to hit mid and you don't have any tiles presence. It's just like, why? So with that being said, you knife tiles, you see nobody's there. Okay, I'm gonna think it's more either a slower play or it's toward the A site. Instantly, that's the information you know. Now, if you do spot someone there, then you know there is a tiles presence and therefore there are players dedicated toward the B side of the map and the mid side of the map. Now, if you have a teammate, let's say playing A main here that was spotting A main and doesn't see anything, you can start piecing the strat together and you start noticing it's probably some sort of B hit with a mid split or they're going up cat. It's one of the two things. With KO being able to get this much information right off the bat and with this ability coming off cooldown in like 40 seconds, you should be trying to gather as much because a lot of the times in ranked, the strats are really simple and they don't really think very hard. It's rush A, rush B, play slow, play fast. That's pretty much it. So if you can counter those four simple strats, your win rate will just go up high. Next, let's talk about the flashes, when you should use left click flashes and when you should use right click flashes. As I said before, left click goes way farther, so it's a lot better for supporting your teammates. For example, if you had a teammate that is pushed up to here, you could toss a flash up high, so it doesn't blind them, but blinds anyone who might be on the other side. The other thing is you can actually go with them. You might want to be the first one ahead. Tell them they're flashing so they can look away, and then you'll just pop the flash, and then turn around, and you can swing behind it. So we're going to talk about the left click flashes and the things you can do with it. So the most basic left click flash is obviously just to throw it at them and hope that they're blind. I will say that at a general low elo, this could work. I mean, but if you want to think about it from your own perspective, if you see a flash bouncing out on the ground and taking 12 years to explode, you're probably just going to look away or just start backing out of the line of sight of your danger. If you're going to try to directly flash them, right click is generally the way to go. This is because it's way less time for them to react and you can be much closer so after the flash pops you can just swing if you're throwing your flash from all the way back there chances are you're not going to make it in time after the flash pops to be able to swing in time and they might be unblinded especially if it's not a direct flash tricks you can do with your left flash is bait for it so throwing something like this behind you and swinging after it it flashes behind you so obviously you'll see that i wasn't barely flashed at all and it might bait the people to look away. They see the flash hit this, they intrinsically will turn to look away, and you swing out, they're all dummies and they're not even facing you, you get some free easy kills. And even if someone, let's say, were to swing after it, so like they see the flash, they turn away, and then you come out and kill one of their teammates and they turn back, the flash still pops and they're blind. So there's still a solid chance you can get a kill. Now, I don't think this is the best flash because a lot of the times if someone's playing counter flash or not everyone is looking at the flash, for example, like you do an early A main, there could be players on this side of the wall that haven't even got there. Their teammates get flashed and they just swing and they have no threat to them because they were never in the line of sight of it. And they never saw the flash, so they're never going to get faked out. So a lot of the cases you'll find that right click flashing is a lot better. So you can throw it toward them, which I don't really recommend. A lot of the times I will throw it to my left if I'm swinging toward the right, or if I'm swinging toward the left, I will throw it to the right. The idea is to throw the flash behind you. That way you can look away from the flash much easier. Throwing it something like this and swinging after it will be easier than throwing something like this. Then you have to wait and then swing. Either will work, but one is a little more fluid. Now let's talk about how to get perfect pop flashes. So the best way to learn the internal timer for throwing pop flashes is that you want to understand that ideally you would like your flash literally to pop like right here right on the left side of the wall right outside of it that way any player on this side will literally only have probably like this millisecond to react before the flash pops and therefore the likeliness of them dodging is minimal and therefore the likeliness of you getting a kill is maximized so i would recommend testing it uh in general you'll notice that if i'm standing still and i'm pop flashing to the right 
you'll notice that it pops like that far. This is after just playing with KO a lot and realizing how far the flashes will go. If I throw it laterally directly in front of me, it pops around here around six meters away. So with that being said, if I threw a flash like this, you'll see that it popped right here where I'm standing and that gives you kind of a distance. Knowing the basic minimum distance will kind of allow you to understand when to throw flashes. So practicing your flashes will make you a way better KO as you just get up a lot of kills from people who are just full blind. As a KO, if you want to hit a site, smokes are honestly one of your best friends because it allows you to get as close to sight as possible and have your flash get as maximum value while the defenders actually can't see you if you're inside the smoke. So if you see a smoke, you walk into it and then you're gonna pop flash out and swing out with your entire team also in the smoke so you guys all flood out at the exact same time. Now let's talk about some etiquette for smoke clearing because as a KO, you're gonna be pushing into smoke. So the one thing you can always do is just flash inside the smoke. I think that's pretty simple and then you walk through. A lot of times, I don't think it's worth it. It's a waste of a flash, and if you're trying to like pop flash out of the smoke, well, that's kind of a tell, right? You, if the defender hears a flash in the smoke, they're going to be wary that, hey, there's a likely chance that they're just going to end up running through with a flash. The next thing to do is clearing the smoke manually. Ideally, you'd like a teammate with you, and you're probably not clearing alone, um, so that way you can at least trade if someone's inside. But the way to clear smokes is not to stick your gun in and just walk through the smoke. That gets you killed because your gun is going to show before you see anything. You will be on the outside of the smoke. Your gun barrel will be pointing inside the smoke. The guy inside will see that and just shoot you and kill you. So the way to do it is actually if you imagine the smoke comes out as a ring like here, you're going to look to the side and then as you come in, you swing your mouse in. This way, if you think about it, the gun barrel is not showing and when you come in and you can see, then your entire body and your gun shows all at the same time. It's less time for people inside to react to it and therefore a higher chance for you to get the kill. In the end, clearing a smoke on your own is really hard. That's why if you can, you will have a teammate with you. And then when you get to the edge, then you can pop flash out. I also want to mention how to use two flashes effectively because you should be thinking a little bit different when you have two flashes instead of one. When you have one, a lot of the times all you want to do is right click because that's your only flash, therefore that's your only advantage you can really use in a gunfight. Using it as a right click will give you the most amount of value because you can swing right off of it and you have a more likely chance of getting a kill. A lot of left click flashes might flash someone, you aren't able to capitalize it, therefore you just wasted your flash, so that's why right click's a little bit better. Now when you have two, and the scenario is that you're pr likely not gonna get another chance to use your second flash. So for example, let's talk about retaking A, right? So there's a smoke here and a smoke here. You have two flashes. Do you just pop flash out and then just run out? Yeah, you could. And there's a chance you just get kills and stuff like that. What you wanna realize is that your chances of using your second flash on this retake are pretty much gone. Once you get onto site, there's gonna be almost no time where you're gonna want to pull out your flash again because you're fighting the players that are on site. So how do you make your success chances of retaking better? Instead of always just right clicking and then that last flash doesn't do anything, you'll use both. So tossing one over the wall, and then immediately flashing right after that. So you, because the way of the first one takes way longer, I have the time to pop flash through immediately after. So that one flashes, and then the second one flashes right after. You get more coverage, you have a li more likely chance of getting kills and not dying because more people are more likely to be flashed, and you don't waste your second flash. Yeah, you could save it into the next round, but let's be honest, it's usually better to just win, win the round. And if you get one kill from it, you've already paid off the price of the flash. Let's talk about his molly or fragment grenade. You're gonna wanna use this obviously like most mollies to clear certain angles that you don't want to deal with. You can learn molly lineups. I don't think that's fully necessary, but for example, if you haven't cleared wine, a lot of the times it's worth to just drop it. I will say KO molly isn't like the best molly. It doesn't last very long. It acts in four pulses. So you can actually dodge in between the pulses and you wouldn't take any damage. Using it whenever you can find value is the idea. So if you don't want to clear wine and you know there's a possibility they could be wine, just throwing it there to clear is great. When you're running out A, if you just throw it toward heaven, that'll just give you just enough time to scale out sight before the molly fades and therefore it's going to be much more dangerous for them to swing. Basically, whatever value you can find you'll just use it there to stall it doesn't really do much more value on top of that maybe if the enemy has a kj then yeah okay save it for that but in general it's not something that you really want to be focusing around saving as much as possible the flash has the biggest potential so we kind of talked about zero points and how to use them early round 
and the times you should be saving for late round. But the most important part about being a good KO is understanding what you need your knife to do. A lot of people will just search for maximum value. They're like, oh, I need to suppress five players and I want to know where all five are. I'm sorry to tell you that that's a lot of the times not what the idea of the ability should be. And there's a lot more times that the information matters more than the actual suppress. So if you're a KO that waits, right? They want to wait till they hear footsteps so that their knife will actually suppress somebody. While that's good, I will say in a lot of cases, that is not always true. Let me give you a scenario. It's a 3v3 situation. I'm on A site. I have a teammate mid defending and I have a teammate B. So we're trying to hold. We have no idea where the enemy is. Now I could save this knife until I hear smokes coming up, smokes coming up. And then I throw the knife against it and they're like, then it might be suppressed. Maybe they have one less smoke or something like that. But at that point, I'm still playing a 1v3. In that specific instance, the idea is not maximum value. That doesn't make any sense. Had I thrown this knife way earlier, the moment I knew I had no information, like let's say I had just thrown it somewhere deep like there, and I caught them all the way back here, then my teammate from mid rotates to A to help me, and then my teammate from B starts rotating earlier. Yes, I might not catch all three. Maybe I only catch one. But it's a big enough tell for that my teammates to get an early head start to help me in this hit. Rather than knowing too late, it's understandable that now you realize that suppressing them doesn't stop them from coming to sight, but getting the information will help you hold the site. If you're watching this, then you've reached the halfway point of this video. Welcome to the secret society where only cool people live. If you've gotten to this point, comment down below and let me know because I love to see that you guys have watched this far and that I'm providing you value. If you guys don't already know, I'm a coach on Medify as well as I create comprehensive guides that are all about 30 to 40 minutes on how to play every single agent at an extremely high level, breaking down concepts as well as strats and play styles. I stream on Twitch three times a week at 4 p.m. EST to 8 p.m. EST. So if you want to check me out there, you're welcome to. I appreciate you for watching this far. Don't forget to one tap that like button for me and change it blue, as well as hit the subscribe button if you like this sort of content and want to stay up to date with me. Without further ado, let's continue on to the video. Now I get a lot of questions on, do I need to know knife lineups? I'm rarely ever gonna say lineups are bad because obviously the more places you could throw a knife and have it be effective, the better. But I will say it is usually unnecessary because a lot of the knives you wanna throw are kind of self-explanatory. I want to hit everyone on site. All right, throw it against dice, right? I want, I want to hit people who are going to be peaking cap. All right, throw it against there. Does it get maximum value? No, you could probably throw it like here and then the radius would cover deeper toward window and garden and as well as tree, but it does 90% of the same job. In some cases, it's actually better. So let me actually talk about that. Throwing knives that have maximum radius that covers everything tells you less information. Let me show by an example. I throw a knife dice. Looking at the radius, it covers all of sight. Now I'm going to throw a knife toward the right side along this wall. Now, what does this tell me? This tells me that if I spot somebody, they're on the right side of sight. Limiting the range actually sometimes helps a lot because now you know that there's one person specifically on this half of the site. You can go as far as doing something like this and now you've essentially cleared hard right. If you don't spot anybody, you don't need to worry about it. There's the same thing for coming up A. Instead of always worrying about who you're trying to suppress, this could help a lot. Before your A hits, you throw your knife here, and then as you're running out, if this knife doesn't spot anyone toward this area, then you're likely not going to need to worry about cat or tree. The smokes come up, now I'm less worried about someone just flashing out the smoke, and I'm just gonna worry about closing the door and getting onto site. As for knives on the attacking side, there's a few different ways you wanna do it. You want to clear certain angles and make it awkward. So on ascent, a lot of the times it would be cat. You throw the knife here. Doesn't make anyone who wants to swing cat very comfortable. One, because you know they're there. Number two is that if it's like the chamber, he won't be able to TP. The next thing you wanted, you can do is for early info, and that's to make sure you're not getting aggressed on. So throwing a knife here will tell you if anyone's even close to the front of a main. So if they're not close, then you know you can literally just book it up. You just run up, you don't have to worry about anything because the radius goes out to here. So therefore, the, the idea that this guy's just gonna be ready to swing as you're running up is very unlikely. The next way is to clear deeper into an area. So looking for like a knife there, after a solo darts mid, now you've essentially cleared this entire area. And now with that being known, if you capitalize on that fast enough, you can immediately 
uh, catch up to the space that was created from a break the chamber trip and now you can just maybe wait here maybe you lurk up into pizza and you just hold this sort of angle seeing if anyone will try to retake market ko knife is super good on brushes because if you catch off let's say a chamber who's trying to get aggressive with his off right so immediately off right off the barrier rip you throw your knife like this it catches off the chamber chamber is suppressed can't tp out has no gun gets immediately picked and then your smokes come up you molly one of the smokes right and then you maybe pop flash onto site and now you have a free site in a 5v4 advantage so you notice that the ko knife is really good for that if you're gonna rush definitely commit to using the knife for earlier rather than later this is just to shut out that because if imagine the rush just kind of stopped immediately if you just get picked by the chamber and he tps out immediately the rush sucks at that point so yeah use your utility to best suit the type of play style that you have as well as the best sort of strat that your team is doing now let's talk about no command ko's ult so there are a few ways to use it one is to get close and then pop the ult suppressing everyone in the range next is to pop it right off the barrier so which one is better well if you're going against the viper a lot of the times it is better just to pop it right off the barrier this is because the moment you catch the viper in she's unable to stall at all orb does never goes up walls never go up and she's unable to molly the choke to stop you from pushing out she's essentially just screwed she has no abilities and she has no way of stalling and she kind of just has to hide so on ascent obviously it isn't a viper map but let's say on breeze where they play the b bomb site viper will get ulted orb never goes up you just have a free b line onto site and you don't even have to deal with being vulnerable from her molly now in terms of dome smokers it might not be as good because a lot of the dome smokers have a very significantly long range viper generally plays around her utility but in terms of like brimstone omen and astra a lot of times she'll, they can be playing farther away therefore the smokes can still come up and therefore, a lot of times on those reasons, I will like to walk up closer. That way, when I pop the ult, even if the smoke comes out, I will probably have beaten it before it goes down and my team will come out behind me. Now let's kind of talk about how to use it on the defensive side. So yes, right when they're hitting, you pop ult, great, you die, you get down, your teammates can still save you, yada, yada, yada. I'm sure people aren't really surprised that yes, you can pop ult when they're hitting the site. I'll add a few more reasons when, on when you should pop ult. When you're hearing enemies, but your team is out of position. So for example, a lot of times this happens on Haven where you hear like an A rush and maybe you lost the pick. For example, we'll use Ascent for example. You have a teammate that was playing A main, you're playing tree. Your A main guy gets picked and they're running it. They're booking it. If you immediately pop ult, none of the smokes come down. You molly behind it. Now no one's gonna run out. They have to wait it out the complete duration. And this is a way to kind of patch up the boat from sinking because you lost the pick and they just want to capitalize on it. This is just a really good way of using ult. Rather than just waiting to retake, you can just pop it early and stall them out that way. The next is to use to support your teammates. So what I want to show from mid here is that KO ult's range is obviously a radius. So if you pop your ult somewhere like this, you realize that it, it reaches towards the tree area and anyone in tree would also be suppressed so with one person you could suppress cat suppress market throw a molly toward spawn and now you've taken a ton of space your teammates could technically work up cat if they wanted to while you're making noise mid and you kind of use your ult to support your team while not being with them saving ko's a null command for ultimate such as raise rocket and chamber off or just a few examples is a good way to use it and like the knife you should th be thinking the same way if you can get that value it's a lot of times worth it um it really depends though obviously if they're already in a losing position and you don't need to use it um you can just use your knife but there will be reasons why you would save your ult basically the blanket goal with your null command is to try to hit a timing with it so if you're going against dome smokers you want to hit them before they've activated their ability sometimes yes they can stay quiet and they can catch you off guard but not always and if you can hear them ahead of time you pop it early it buys time for your team to rotate and therefore your chances of holding site are just way higher so now moving on let's talk about play style how should you be playing as ko well ideally you want to be playing around anywhere where there's a doorway some sort of wall you can pop flash behind this way you can hide wait for some sort of sound cue pop flash swing get free kills the next is if you can be somewhere close to a choke point that's good because now you can support and stall your team by mollowing the choke as well as getting information toward the main ways to hit the site like A main, B main on every single map really easily. 
I would generally not usually recommend KO to be the site player because he sometimes is a lot better as a retaker than he is as a site anchor. This is because if you think about the door smoke, I explained before, you just pop flash out and you swing out, you kill whoever is on site. And that's really solid way of re-entering onto site after you've lost it. Now, even as they're running out, if the smoke is here, you can pop flash and you fight with your teammate that is maybe dice or hell, and you come and shoot them from the back of the head and your teammate swings out and you guys just bottle them at this choke. KO's priority here will either be to defend the site with the site anchor or to leave the site and kind of play for retake. When you have no command, a lot of the times, you'll find that it might be better to just save it for retake if your teammates like just absolutely screwed. And what I mean by that is like they either just got like naded out or picked immediately or there's like a dart that's like above here or something like that. Reina flash is just a crap ton of utility and you swinging through this will likely just get you killed. So therefore you'll just sit back, you wait for your teammates from B to come through and then you will just ult and retake with your team. Now as for aggressive or defensive styles of play, you can alternate between both. So defensive style would just be usually waiting off utility. So if you have a, let's say a chamber trip right here for cat and you have a main control, you can just wait here, wait for the chamber trip to come, some sort of uh, notification to be told, and then you pop flash and then swing off of that. You can also just be playing as a site anchor, but obviously you want to be playing around your best kind of util, which in KO's case is his flash drive. As for aggressive maneuvers, that's obviously still doable, but I would generally sway on the side of if you're confident with your aim, taking aggressive fights is sometimes okay. KO is one of those agents where if he dies, it's not the worst. He's not a smoke agent, he doesn't have heal, he's not a primary opper. Uh, his information is good, but it's like his point is to be almost an entry out a lot of cases because his flash is so good. So yeah, on attacking side you could be the first one in where you're just clearing everything you pop your ult and you're running in because if you die you can get down you run in the smoke you pop flash out you swing out and yes KO can do all of that but he can also be the supportive type of knifing early a main running up popping ult flashing once flashing twice mauling toward heaven and then running out after that so since he can do both it really depends on the type of team if your teammates already have double duelists or raising a jet your necessity to do that sort of aggressive playstyle is probably less you can be that supported gale but a lot of the meta right now is double initiator triple initiator in that case it's going to seem a little bit more viable to be the aggressive player um you might not be a duelist but you are one of the more aggressive initiators and that wraps up this KO guide. If you wanna see comprehensive guides for individual maps, comment down below, let me know. That way I know that you guys want it. Otherwise, if you're looking for other guides or other agents that you want me to cover, also comment that down below. I filled all the way up to Radiant with no problem playing pretty much any agent that someone threw my way to an extremely high level. So if you wanna see that, make sure you let me know. If you guys ever have any questions, make sure to pop onto my Twitch stream. I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 4 p.m. EST to 8 p.m. And I'd love to chat. With that being said, check out my coaching session in the description below but besides that i will see you in the next one peace out